This video is about adding an InstaLube system from Auto Engine Lube to my Jaguar XK8 in order to get rid of a nasty sounding engine rattle on startup. I split the video into two parts. This part, part one, deals exclusively with the XK8. If you're thinking of installing an engine pre-lubrication system to your car for its many other benefits, then you may want to skip straight to part two. So what are my credentials? Well, not many, I'm afraid, in terms of this subject, so I'll be learning as I go. My name is Rick Astley, and if you have any polite comments or questions, you can contact me at rick at rastley.com. I'm a retired electrical engineer, and I spent the last 15 years of my career working with the auto companies around Detroit, here where I live. From a hobby car point of view, I'm rather more familiar with older British cars like MGs, Triumphs, etc. I have a couple of books published about British car electrical systems. You can see the cover pictures of these here and one of me. And you'll be glad to know that's the last you'll see of me in this video. I do want to emphasize I'm not a mechanic, but I do want to acknowledge the help I had from my friend Harry McLean in diagnosing my car's problems. Harry worked for many years at GM as a development mechanic. I should also add that I have no connection at all with the makers of the InstaLoop kit. And a little about the car. This is a 2004 4.2 litre Jaguar XK8. I bought it on the other side of the state from a used car lot. And each time I went to see the car, the car was uh, nicely warmed up for me, which was very nice to the salesman. He had a slew of electrical problems, any of which I managed to convince him was uh, possibly a $1,500 module. And so I got a really good price and felt very smug. However, I think he started the car up each time for me so I didn't hear a terrible rattling noise when I started the engine from cold and I didn't get hear that until uh, I started it the next morning after buying it. So let's hear the noise. This is an audio trace of the noise you just heard. This is the car cranking, so um, the starter motor um, pre-engagement noise is quite high as it goes in, and it cranks about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six times, and then you hear that very loud rattling noise, which then starts to diminish, and we learn later that uh, diminishment is due to oil pressure coming up. And then the car runs normally uh, pretty much after that. The suspicion that the top end rattle was oil pressure related was confirmed by service bulletins for this and earlier cars that described my car's symptoms exactly. Apparently the secondary timing chains, which are short and under a lot of strain because they are run from the variable valve timing, harbor tension using oil pressure. After switch off, they are supposed to retain pressure and continue to tension the chains, but there is very little oil in them and no air, so the minutest leakage from them results in the chain relaxing. Jaguar have tried to increase the volume of oil and adding springs, but neither seem to be a permanent fix. You'll see how next I artificially raise the oil pressure to see if that would alleviate the noise. What I'm going to try and do here is get the oil pressure up before I start the car. So what I've done is pulled the fuse to the ignition coils. That should allow me to crank the car, but it shouldn't start. Now I'm going to watch this gauge, which is the oil pressure gauge. In truth, it's not really an oil pressure gauge. Uh, Jaguar learned a lot from Ford in terms of quality, but also in terms of doing stuff cheaply. And all there is feeding this is a oil pressure switch, just like that would, which would operate an oil pressure light. But it switches this gauge to center scale or to zero. If it's on, it's a center scale. If it's off, it's a zero. So when there's oil pressure, this goes to the center. So if you thought, how amazing, my Jaguar always sits there right in the middle. It's not really amazing. It's just a cheap trick. Anyway, here we go. We're going to crank the car and watch this until the oil pressure gets up. Then I'm going to stop the tape and we'll um, put the fuse back in and start the car and listen to see whether or not we get that uh, terrible noise that we previously got. So here we go. So the 
oil pressure is now up. I'm going to replace the fuse and then try and start the cup. So at the top here I have the original trace when the engine was started and there was a lot of rattling noise afterward and below I have the one I just did where I artificially raised the oil pressure by cranking the car first. As you can see again there are about six cranks and then the engine starts but unlike last time where there was this, there was this very loud noise there wasn't such a loud noise. In fact I actually didn't hear a noise but this trace shows that there was one for about the same duration about one second before the car ran normally afterward so I think this shows that if we can raise the oil pressure first of all we can stop this rattling and this rattling after all is an indication that there is no oil pressure in the car and that other parts of the engine are perhaps not getting lubricated too this slide is from www.jagrepair.com, a site that I can highly recommend to anybody who's got an XK8. And there's an article there by Easy Driver of Holly Lake Ranch, Texas, who describes how he changed, I think, his second generation tensioners to third generation, which are the type that I have. Easy Driver is evidently a much better mechanic than I am and a braver man than I and he's written a very good article, but I'm not sure I want to attempt it. I took some much simpler engines apart when I was much younger, but it's quite a, a thing to do and cost him, I think, about $350. I did get a quote from somebody whom I trust in the business asking uh, what this would cost to have done and I was quoted $1,500, so that's with, without parts, and it would cost probably another 250 for the parts on top of that. When I described what I'd found and my concerns about changing the tensioners myself to my friend Harry, who's a retired professional mechanic, he suggested I look at a pre loop system. I had to admit I'd never heard of that, and he told me about it, and I did some research, and I found a system from Auto Engine Lube. And that's what I eventually purchased and installed. I looked at the pros and cons, and first of all, it has a reservoir of oil far greater than the tensioner could ever hold, and so should be available much longer. Moreover, it has a lot of air behind it, and that, of course, is a big spring, and it helps uh, push that into the engine. The system would prelude the whole engine. As I think I said before, this noise I get is actually an indication that the rest of the engine isn't getting any lubrication either for the first second or so after the engine is started. And so it seems that that should be a benefit, an added benefit to the whole system. It's a much less invasive installation, one that I thought I could do myself. Also, the engine has no oil leaks right now, which is unique among British cars that I previously owned. And there is some risk of introducing some other problems. Uh, fourthly, I had no confidence at all that Jaguar had uh, really fixed this problem and that it wouldn't reoccur. And fifth, it was less expensive overall, about $100 cheaper than the parts and special tools required to install a new tensioner. A good question, and one I've asked myself, is, is installing this system just treating the symptoms and not the real disease? That's to say, am I just getting rid of the noise but not the root cause? And that is true to some extent, but I think the tensioners are actually doing their primary job of tensioning the secondary timing chain. What they're not doing is their secondary job, and a very secondary job, of holding the pressure after switch off. Also. Jaguar have had at least three attempts to get this, this right, and I don't have much confidence that they've got it right now. I think it's arguable whether any tension system having such a small reservoir of incompressible oil can be expected to maintain tension for very long after the engine is switched off anyway. And other car makers have had the same problem and have had difficulty fixing it, notably Nissan. So I'm now coming to the end of part one of this video, which is mainly about this particular car and perhaps others like it, 
which have hydraulic timing chain tensioners that relax and then cause the car to start very noisily. So this part of the video is kind of out of sequence because actually I've already fitted it to the car now and had some experience with it and you'll see the way I now start the car. What I do is switch the ignition on and wait for the engine light to go off first of all. Now that engine light and the gauge which goes to center scale and the gauge is really as I've said before not really a gauge but a switch and the light goes off and the gauge goes to center scale uh, long before the car has really reached max maximum oil pressure and uh, so I wait a few seconds afterwards before I start the car and then now I always get a quiet start and I know the rest of the car is also equally well lubricated. So here's the gauge coming up doesn't ring very much, I'm going to wait a few seconds here and now I'm going to start the car. And that for me was a very quiet start compared with what I'm used to. I'm showing three graphs here. The, the original one is showing the really loud noise I got after cranking the car and we learned after that was probably due to the tensioners not being pre-pressurized by oil pressure so I pre-cranked the car and raised the oil pressure a little bit and when the oil lights went off I started the car and although I couldn't hear a noise the graph shows there was a slight one and then I've put the InstaLube pre-lubrication system in in the last graph and the area I've circled shows that and again I couldn't hear a noise but actually there was none so I'm very satisfied with the result there.